ready to start? Yeah. So um, a couple of years ago during COVID, this, um, because I have a website, um, this gentleman retiring from being a history teacher on Long Island um, contacted me to colorize his page that he had bought from the Nuremberg Chronicles. Now, I had never heard of the Nuremberg Chronicles. I'd heard of the Nuremberg Trials, but not the Nuremberg Chronicles. So um, what, what it led me to a place that I learned something more about art. So I use a lot of Fabriano paper, and so he um, petitioned me to paint this, and I was scared because this was printed in 1493. And I thought, if I mess this up, but wow. I, 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 you know, said I, I need a little piece. I'm going to try it on the back, see if the watercolor takes to it. Well, lo and behold, things would happen. And I, I was at the Florida Watercolor Society, and the representative from Fabriano Paper was there. And I was sharing this story, and he said to me, that was Fabriano Paper in wow. 1493, <laughs> printed with a Gutenberg printing press. Uh -huh. amount. But anyway, so Fabriano Paper has been around since at least 1493, maybe earlier. Watercolor paper is handmade. Uh, if any of you had to buy it, you, you've found that out. It's not cheap for that reason because there's a lot of technology in it. All right, so we're going to start out with gesso juice. And um, I'm going to show you. So I started doing, I don't have the, the, um, the painting that got into the um, uh, splash, but it's on this gesso juice. So a, a lot of times, um, a, a, a painting doesn't turn out well. And you're going, eh. And that expensive paper underneath that you put all that money into, you think, well, what am I going to do with it? Now, if you go to museums, all those great artists that painted oils, they painted on top of other paintings. Mm -hmm. And they x-rayed them and found that they could, they could see the painting underneath. So it can happen in watercolor, too. I don't know if you can, oh, maybe not, because I got stuff on the back. <laughs> um, this is a gicle of one of my birds on the gesso juice. Now, you see all of these? Movements, okay. I'm, you're going to see how that happens. Can you turn it this way? Yeah. <laughs> and that's over another painting. I started putting it on blank paper, and then I realized I was losing most of the fun. So um, I, I paint a lot of birds. This is not on gesso juice, but I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I like birds. So uh, this is a gesso juice painting with a, a lady. I'm still working on this one. It's not finished. Little details here and there. But there's a story behind each one of my paintings. And then this was, an, that's um, not a relative, but a great friend to a relative. This was my husband's grandmother. This is on gesso juice. This painting got a, won a lot of awards. I don't know if you can see it or if I should take it out of the cellophane. Take it out? Anyway, so this is my um, grandmother who immigrated to the United States. This is her and her sister in um, 19... Uh, three. Um, she was six years old and her little sister was three and the father took this photograph of them. Now she came from Poland, uh, southern Poland near the Ukraine border and there was fighting going on there. There were the Baltic Wars, there was all kinds of stuff going on. So the mother left these two little girls with their father in Poland and she, pregnant she was, and she came to the United States by herself. She had other family members here, and um, this was the photograph the father took of these two little girls. Can I so, ask you a question? Yes. Why do you like Babriano better than Arches? I do a lot of Arches, too. I use Arches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just, the Fabriano went with the story of the Nuremberg Chronicle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into stories. I do paint a lot of stories, 
and all my military series is it, our stories of letting, telling the, pe the stories of these people and things that happened in the times and you know the things that people go through. So this is a painting that um, I redid and uh, I decided to cover it with gesso juice. I haven't decided what I'm putting on it yet, but um, you can put this, this is one coat of gesso. Um, you can do more than one if you want. Uh, with the, with the, my grandmother, I, I ended up, because those girls wore these little white pinafores back then. And um, I, wanted, I took it to the end, so I ended up adding. But you see all this color underneath? That's the painting that's underneath. So, as you know, I don't lose, and you can see it's all green, and this painting has like no green in it, except where it comes through. And so I'm gonna show you how that happens. And I'm gonna grab how I apply it. Oh, here we go. Which is a credit card. So not a good one. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. But I wanted you to see what it looks like before you put on an, us another painting. So. Uh, this is a demo that I did um, at, at um, Palm Beach Watercolor Society. And, and again, it's another bird. Because this is a demo, it has to be fast. And I've done another bird that we're going to do today. Um, and so I draw, drew the bird on this because it's very hard to draw on the gesso juice. But I do this a lot. I draw on on this type of you know it's it's um, yeah tissue well it's not tissue paper tracing paper. It's, what tracing paper no it's tracing. a tracing paper tracing. so that you can put it over something and so I did so I could put it on here and trace it using carbon and I used a, a yellow anyway so this is going to be this photo. I was pulling into Publix and there was a puddle under the parking space and, and these birds were, were, and I took a lot of photos, they were drinking from the puddle. But look at the reflection, you know, the artist in me was going, oh, and so I'm holding up traffic <laughs> as I'm taking the photos of the bird. So anyway, so it goes on tracing paper and then I have it if I want to use it again. And it, it races, you can see my erasure lines as I, you know, sketched. And, um, and then this is the reference photo. Again, this photo, we're getting into the technology a little <coughs> bit here. So these were the birds, you know, and, and I have a lot of photos of those birds. And so I picked, I think that's the one I picked and I didn't do the other bird. So you can see, it's almost like a black and white because of the, you know, the, the um. so I took that photo and I went to my app and this, I read that black and white photo, I put it in my app and I can colorize it and I get different ideas. Oh, wow. that's the app. So, so that's the Mix app that I talked about, M-I-X. You just download it, and, you, and I, I don't pay for anything. I just go to the free version. That's <laughs> really <laughs> amazing. Right, so it gives you ideas. Now you can't paint it exactly like, like this because this is technology. This is not art. It is art in a yeah, form, but it's a new technology form. So I can't paint it that way, but it gives me ideas on right. how to paint it. Why not? These were some of the other... Yeah. Why can't you paint it that way if you choose to? Well, I thought the black and white was kind of available to any phone. And it's called MIX? MIX mix. So this is what I the uh, the... The app did when I put in a photo. Now, the photo on the street, this was a photo, that's this painting. That's a scene from Miami. During COVID, I, I normally do something with my grandchildren, and we couldn't because of COVID. So they had this laser light show in Miami. So I took the grandkids down to Miami, and it was down in Virginia Beach, which is way, way down. A beautiful area. And coming back, we pulled there and stopped waiting for that car to pull onto the roadway and I just grabbed my phone and snapped that photograph but I, I thought it was beautiful because it's the whole downtown area of Miami 
And I painted this with two uh, layers. I did Quinn Gold on the top. Now I, I, I masked out a lot of stuff. And I, and I sprayed mask with a mouth atomizer. Anybody have one of those? Spray yeah. With a mouth, mouth atomizer. atomizer. Mouth atomizer. Mouth atomizer. It's like two, um, um, yeah, two poles. masking fluid in that? Yeah. And masking fluid. I blow masking and fluid. Uh -huh. Oh my God. This I is have some of the art yeah. stuff. It's like blowing with a straw, but it's much more precise. That's right, cool. right. And you got to practice before you go yes, on to paper. You do have to practice. But you can see all this little white, that's the masking fluid that I blew onto it to create that light in that um, and then you can see I sprayed it on I painted this yellow first let it dry and then I sprayed the masking fluid so I can get that that out you know and then that this is as um, you know saran wrap down at the bottom to get those effects these are my three grandchildren in the park having popsicles we have color, design, and surface. So, what I just showed you was technology. Options you get from technology. Now we're gonna, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this. So here's a painting that's not going anywhere. So she's gonna get covered up. <laughs> what the, <laughs> she's not going anywhere. But this painting may end up going somewhere. I don't know. So I'm just going to tape it down roughly. Just making circles with masking tape. So this is, I'm gonna, you can pass these around if you want. Take one if you want the recipe. This is the gesso juice recipe. I saw it once. I didn't. No. 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 Um, uh, Kathleen O'Connor tried to get Cheap Joe's to make it, but he refused. Okay, so you use uh, the cheaper brand of gesso. Do not buy the good stuff, buy the cheap stuff. This is basic latex brand, and it is watery. This is golden matte medium. Golden what? Matte medium. medium. Just regular matte medium. That's expensive. And water. Those are the three things. Pass it over to Joe. Please, please. All right. So those are the those are the and you want it. You may have to play with it to get it, but this is the consistency you want. And then, so I pour about that much on. I may have to add more. Can everybody see? Yeah. Yeah. You can gather around. Now, so I leave the corners open in the beginning. And if I, and I'm, for what I decide to paint, now look what I'm getting. I'm already getting some of this coming through. When it dries, it's going to dry more white because that gesso is pretty white now. But you're, I'm just showing you how it how it looks. And I don't think I need any more. If it, you can see that I had some strong color because it's picking up some of the purple. Now I can make any kind of design I want with this credit card. So it's up to me how I want to do this. You can see I can get it pretty smooth going that way with those lines. But I like to like make something. Anyway, and that gives dots and whatever you want, that sort of thing. So that's applying the gesso juice. And this is 140 paper. This will take about a day. If you put it on 300 paper, it could take a couple days to dry. And you just put it somewhere where, you know, it's not going to be disturbed. 300 needs a lot of paint. It doesn't oh, absorb. Okay. I like the 150 better. Right. Well, this none of this paint is going to get absorbed because you just put matte medium 
in the gesso and that's going to resist everything and I'm going to show you what happens. So you can see I've got this really cool texture with these colors coming through. It's going to dry a little uh, whiter. Oh, okay. That will work. <laughs> All right, so we're done with this. This is going to go here and sit, and its job is to dry. Now, this is the last one I did. I'm going to do, start painting on this one. This is the last one I did, and I'm going to show you why. And I'm going to use a, a paper towel. Now, because this has resist in it, so I painted these these colors and they got darker and darker. Uh, if I want to make this corner, this center, all that paint comes off. Just look, can you lift it up? Right, yes, yes. That's it. Why are you lifting that? I'm just to show you what you can do and why watercolor is more fun with this because if this were acrylic paint, even if you use that really thin acrylic, you know, the fluid acrylics, yeah. uh, they act just like watercolor, but they don't, you can't pick them up. They're down, they're down. So, uh, but with this watercolor, I can take, that's because of the gesso juice? That's because of the golden matte medium. It's a resist. It's everything is sitting on top of this. But do you see what I can do? Look at the cool lines I can get from. How do you feel that? Because it's always working. So you can see the interesting things you can get. And you can play with this. You could do fabulous abstracts with this. You put down different shapes and then you lift with a paper towel and you just, you know, get very interesting. Uh, like I had put. Um, I'm going to do that with this bird and you'll see. But you can see that I can, I can, and then I can go and paint again if I want. It's, and then you could, so you can take off, put back, and decide what you want. If you didn't like what you did, no problem. You can remove it. So you see all, and then you still have these great lines. Now you can't get rid of the lines. They're there. One thing that you can do if you get a line where you don't want it, I take watercolor crayons. Anybody have used these? Yeah. So I can take that watercolor crayon and I can, if I decide I want some light, this, this is a, I can add some white in there with this watercolor crayon if I can't lift in any other way. They're, they're just different ways to, to get what you want. I can take black and I can give another effect using the side. I peel, I don't, you know, I don't keep, I'm not worried about how the crayons look. I'm worried about how the painting looks. So I can take and, and move things around and get different effects using these. And you can wet it after you do it or not. It, you can see that black gives it a very interesting, I can put some of the brown. Because you always, it always, you know, it dries and it gives you some surprise effects. So, all right, so I'm gonna start with this one. So I've got a bird here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a, a dark background for part of this. Um, I mean, just a pencil, I, I, because I copied that bird, I had sketched this bird, as I said, with pencil, and then I put um, yellow carbon paper underneath. It's not carbon, it's something else. Yeah, yeah, it's probably not graphite, the yellow. It's if you're working on a dark background and you want it to show and that's, that's all I had available, because I, I teach and I have an office with supplies. I only had the yellow at home, so. All right.
So I'm going to go ahead and see what I can start doing with this bird. I'm going to do a little bit of this neutral tint. So you need a lot of paint when you're working on this because you got to resist in here. So it's a lot of pigment. See how it resists? It's not going into the paper like regular watercolor. Trace it. And then you can use graphite paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you use like a just a pe pencil. A pencil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can you use a, a wet on wet technique on it? On the surface? <laughs> no. No. Because you're going to be using a lot of, you can pl play with it. You can do things that wet on wet and all those other things can't do. And I just lifted with a paper towel, with a damp paper towel. But I had put these colors that I'm going to do right now underneath on this bird. So that when I lift, he's going to end up going to be painted with black um, jet wash. But these bright colors underneath are going to add a lot to to him. How fast will those colors dry? Um, it takes time, but they'll 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 be drying as I paint. This is just water, regular watercolor, but it's thick. It's not as, um, you know, watered down as you would use it. You can see I'm going right into paint that comes out of the tube. And I'm going through a lot of it. So it's, it's, and I'm putting this underneath on him. So you can see, like, I didn't co cover all of this, and so it's going in. You're seeing that it's going into these. What do you mean? Yeah, the girls. Where did you put it? Ah, when you put the gesso, gesso juice on, you don't cover everything? I don't in the beginning. And if I want to cover it to the end, I can go back and put gesso over this if I decide I want it white. I thought when you use the credit card, it really spread all over. It does spread, but you can see it when I press and when I lift, I get all these uh, interesting different shapes. So. Yeah, and like I said, and if you just want to play with it doing abstracts, you can do that too, because it's really fun, because you lift, and you lay down, you change your mind, you know, in abstracts, that's how it goes. And you see how I how it really just lends itself to, to all of this. And I look at all the shapes that I'm getting from that gesso. See all those lines? And then the more paint I put on, I can really cover them dark, and, and then I can change my mind and lift it. So if you're using acrylic paint, you're not going to be able to change your mind and lift it. However, with alcohol, if you have a maybe, if you maybe. have a resist, if right? You have an okay, you can use alcohol. You're right. You're right. You can. Yeah, it's a little little work, but it doesn't it's, work as well as quickly. Right. Right. But you're right. You're right. well but it also lifts like watercolor it's just thicker see how thick 
it is But I'm putting it over all these prettier colors, and so it's going to give my bird a little more interest. And I'm going to let some of that come right through. Well, see, that white isn't white white. No, but yeah, I, yeah, but I, yeah. So you, you get from the other painting, you yeah. get. And I'm sure we all have paintings that aren't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a closet full, and I and I get halfway and I go, what was I thinking? And at the moment that I thought it, I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> and again, this gouache is great, but I will lift some of it so I can get like on him, get some of that color. Photography after a rain is really, really pretty. I had a friend that was um, into photography and, you know, the, the trees and all, all glisten after a rain. So you get really pretty photos. And like I said, this was just this, this, um, this bird that was trying to get water. It really wasn't a rainy day. I don't know when it had rained earlier that day. But anyway, and then you can add all of this, this other, you know, color and thing as, as you You get the idea. Any questions?